Hey, hey guys, things are looking a little different today. This is a completely unscripted video. I wanted to keep it super cash. I wanted it to be more of like a hangout sesh. So I am here in my backyard with you and we are gonna talk about the comments that I received regarding my hair loss video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Gabby and I have a condition called traction alopecia. Basically what traction alopecia is, is when you have hair loss due to tension being put on your hair follicles. When I was in my early 20s, I wore really tight ponytails. I wore a lot of extensions coupled with a lot of other things including some like nutritional deficiencies, self-esteem issues, a bunch of stuff it was a huge mess I ended up losing the majority of the hair on the sides of my head and so I made a video about it to warn people who are going through that and who are also doing that so that they wouldn't end up with what I ended up with so if you haven't seen that video you might want to check out that video next or before you watch this video because this video will make a whole lot more sense if you see the context behind that video just as a backstory that's the first video on my channel that has really exploded and gotten over a hundred thousand views and with a lot of views comes a lot of opinion with a lot of views comes a lot of people and with a lot of people comes some really crazy comments <laughs> so this video is just a response to the comments that I got on that video some of it's really mean some of it is stories from other people who have experienced the same thing and then some of it is just a lot of advice for me if you are interested in this then keep on watching okay so Patty T said 34 laugh out loud girl you look 48 so this is a recent comment i just got it about a day ago and there's this thing in society with like being older as a woman as like the ultimate offense you know and so clearly this person was saying that to like hurt me it, it kind of got me thinking beyond that because it's like you're only 34 you look 48 like clearly that's like really mean and why is it that that's really mean so then i started to think about my own reaction to that because I'm like oh what the hell and I'm like why am I offended by that and also in my video I talked about how I don't have any gray hair yet but it's coming I don't have any roots I don't have gray hair yet thank god although it's coming at 34 it's coming so I got a bunch of comments about the gray hair thing that made me really think about it differently. This viewer wrote, there's nothing wrong with gray hair heart. And you know what? That's true. There is nothing wrong with gray hair. And it, and it really got me thinking like, why did I make it seem like it was negative to become older as a woman? And then why did that viewer try to, cr try to like bring me down by saying I looked older and why was that offensive to me why is it that as women as we age in society instead of becoming more respected more admired you know like men do they get older they get wiser they get sexier and women it's like the complete opposite it's like the younger you are the sexier sexier you are the better you are the more people want you the more people want to book you as a makeup artist or a hairstylist and that that's sad that's not not right that's not the right way to think about it you know I think about my career as a makeup artist and a stylist and I'm 34 now and when I was 24 when I was like in it in the club scene and hanging out with people and being like really cool and I knew what was up with fashion and beauty I was significantly less experienced and not as talented at all as I am now like my skills have taken a lot of time to mature and to grow i've had to be put into lots of situations where i made mistakes i had to learn through lots of different hair types and different scenarios with bridal and with film and tv and fashion and pressure as i get older i get better so why do we feel like as we get older we like lose who we are as women and that's so sad so when I saw that comment, it just kind of made me reflect on my own ageism bias and why it is that I feel like I have to control this clock and like stay looking super young. It's all to do with society and how we perceive beauty in women in society and how we don't value older women in society. And that's a problem. And that is something that I'm going to work on because that comment didn't like personally offend me. It just made me recognize that 
there is an issue with being a woman and, and an aging woman in society and that should be changed that should be recognized and we should we shouldn't try to like freeze these clocks in the way that we do and like desperately hold on to something that isn't that desirable i really really enjoy being older now and i think when i made that vi that comment it was just like a part of that internal stereotype that i've been exposed to especially in this industry and that i'm buying into and i don't want to spread that message i don't want to spread the message that growing older is not beautiful and that you have to be completely plastic and you need to try to like freeze your age because i don't think that's a positive message to send to anyone at any age the next comment i got was by margarita hernandez and she said i'm sorry but that is only common sense all the weaves extensions and tight pulling of the hair is bound to happen and ariana grande comes to mind i know that it can seem like that when you haven't experienced it and i don't blame you for thinking that you know if if i was watching a video of someone talking about that i would also think like you did this to yourself like this is so common sense but the really weird thing about traction alopecia is that it's like a habitual thing it almost at the time when i was wearing my hair like that i really really felt like it was the only way that i would look beautiful i really i didn't feel good about myself in so many ways and if you watch my follow-up video about my hair loss story you can really get a sense of that there was a lot going on with body image issues i was in the heart of the fashion industry there was so much criticism and so much vanity present at that time and i was also so very young that i felt like i looked the most beautiful with my hair super super tight or super super long and i just felt like that was the only way that i could be like accepted in the industry because that's in my head what became like the most beautiful image so when i didn't wear my hair like that i didn't feel pretty and that's that sounds so silly but when you you know when you're when you're going through that and you're very young there's a lot more at bay than just like that's common sense like don't do that anymore you know it's kind of like telling someone who's anorexic like you don't look good like just start eating it's like a mental health thing. And I think that my hair being worn like that was, there was a greater problem in terms of mental health, in terms of anxiety and body image issues, and maybe some type of low level depression that was present there for that to have happened. And for me to have noticed the thinning, but I didn't even care because the, the way that that style made me feel trumped the fact that my hair was thinning and I think as well when you're young you have this invincibility factor where you think nothing's going to happen to you you even see it now with COVID-19 and the younger people getting together they don't think it's going to happen to them and I was like that I just didn't think it would happen to me I'm like oh there's a few follicles falling out whatever it's no big deal it doesn't matter whatever just keep wearing it keep wearing it like I understand why she wrote that but I just think that you can't minimize someone's experience when you're talking to someone who's exposing something to you you can't minimize their reactions to an experience they had because you weren't the one living that experience and you have to be able to like put yourself in a different set of shoes and at that time and my second video goes through it, there was just a lot more at bay that was controlling my behaviors and the consequences didn't matter. Then I had like a million comments um, about Jojo Siwa. Is that how you say her name, Siwa? Like Jojo Siwa has left the chat and like, my God, so many comments. And like, okay, it's, it was kind of funny the first time I read it and then after I got like 10 comments about this, I'm like, yeah, okay, get it. Sorry, there's something going on outside. I think it's a truck. So this is what I have to say about this. She wears her hair very, very tight and like she should definitely like chill on the tight ponies or her mom should because she's definitely gonna get traction alopecia and it's not gonna be re reversible. But you know, at the same time with the whole Jojo thing, I kind of feel bad because she's like a child and there's so many comments about her on here that are like derogatory, I guess, in its own way and like, She's just a little girl, you guys. Like, she's just a little girl. The internet can be such a nasty place. How would you feel if that was your daughter or if that was you as a kid, you know? Like, 
the world has enough like mean girls like let's not contribute to that okay like she's just a kid like i don't want to see any more jojo comments on this video i swear to god okay this next comment is by a viewer named miri brown and she says i wear tight ponytails and buns all the time i even i'm even wearing it right now and i can notice loss of hair in the same way but i just can't stop i feel so uncomfortable doing any other hairstyles this is exactly what I was talking about. Girl, I feel you. It's so easy for someone to say like, that's so obvious and so common sense and like, it serves you right, you know, for losing your hair, but this is exactly what I was talking about. It's not common sense. Like when you are deeply committed and hab habituated into creating this look that makes you feel the best that you can feel, this isn't common sense like i get this viewer and all i can tell you miri is that you have to find a way to feel beautiful without your hair being in that style because long term you won't be able to wear your hair in that style anyway because there won't be the hair there to pull this is really 100 percent in your control and like you have to take control of it now because once you get to the point like me where the follicles aren't there it's just too late another comment from sugar sweet is that unless your scalp is burnt you have follicles stimulate the scalp with cinnamon or cayenne pepper the hair fibers are a cosmetic fix if you want real hair to grow bby the spot and don't stress so i think this is this is where the the misconception comes with hair loss there are no follicles there like i got them looked at microscopically at the dermatologist's office and there are no follicles there there are no follicles so i had oh my god like hundreds of comments on like try um derma rolling try rice water try cinnamon try garlic if there are no follicles under the the, the scalp area there's no hair that can grow like the follicle the bud of the hair it's not that it's just not growing and it's there it's actually not there there's no follicles there so the only way that i could get my hair to grow is if i did a transplant that's the only way. I don't have the follicles there to grow the hair. So I'm not even gonna go through all of the comments that I had advice like this, but there were a lot that were like, your dermatologist is wrong. And this like, my dermatologist is not wrong, you guys. We have to think about like modern science. There are no follicles. No follicles, no hair. Then I had another comment from Lupe Gonzalez who says, I'm surprised she's not crying. So this is an interesting one because I know that as women, we have this tendency to see our hair as like our crown of glory. But for me, like I think because I've been through so many years of feeling less than or that I wasn't beautiful or that I needed to be thinner or that I needed to be more fit and like, I went through so many years of just not accepting myself as a beautiful person and when I grew up I was definitely an ugly duckling and I just like I never really felt like I was this super beautiful person and I think having gone through all those years of insecurity now that I'm older I've come to recognize especially after having children that your beauty and how you look on the outside is really just like a portal to carry who you are on the inside around and it's not that important and like yeah i don't have hair on the sides and that sucks because i can't wear my hair in certain ways but it definitely doesn't define who i am it definitely doesn't define how i see myself i would never think of myself, if I had to describe myself in five ways, I would never use that as a description factor of how I see myself. And I said that in one of my videos, like this is something that has happened to me. It's what has happened, but it's not who I am. Sorry guys, so my camera was in the sunlight and it got really overheated and it shut down. So I had to take a little break. Brittany Power said, no, your doctor is wrong. Mine was bad because of my mom always doing my hair so tight. I've been getting it to grow back without a doctor you are so making money off this ad so the doctor isn't wrong i'm not even going to go into that again because i already explained it a lot of people seem to think that they know more than like a doctor with a microscope but the doctor is not wrong and making money off this ad i had a few comments like this and like i can definitely see why it would seem like i'm making money off of that ad i'll just 
tell you right straightforward what happened. That product is by a company called Glam Touche. That company hired me to try out the products and make an Instagram tutorial for their Instagram. They paid me $50 to do that, okay? $50, it was a one minute tutorial and that is like straight up no lying, no bullshitting. And then because I really liked the product and I was making this video, I incorporated the product into that video. I wasn't paid for the video. Glam Touche didn't even pay me to put that video on my Instagram. They just paid for me to create the content for their Instagram and for their Facebook marketing. So I was not paid for this video. I can see how it would seem that way, but I just wanted to show a solution that actually did work for me from this company that sent it over. So I had a few comments about that. Like I can see why you would think that, but no, I wasn't paid for the YouTube video. I wasn't paid to talk about it in the video. I was just paid to make a one minute Instagram for their, their uh, marketing. Penelope Nichols says, my focus was 100% on trying to figure out what is hanging out of your nose. I thought you should know. It's a nose ring. It's a nose ring. That's what it is. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. If you're interested in this video, you may be very interested in watching this one next. I'll see you in a few days. Bye.